I'm not going to say I'm going to remove P or anything, but I think SASI should uh, do a good job and actually try to find the people who did this. And uh, I mean, don't be too light on them. I mean, if, if, if we would find who did it, I, I think we should uh, maybe remove them from SASI, ban them from parties. And I think we need to show school that we're doing something. So I would be quite, uh, quite hard on finding the people that did it and showing school that um, SASI is, you know, they, they do something about it, not, not just try to sweet talk it, but actually show that we can punish the people that did this. Uh, yes, that would be very unfortunate if that would happen. Um, and of course, that is not okay. I would talk to the people in charge and uh, see how that happened and what we can learn from this uh, situation. But I also think that if it's urgent, then uh, I would call the people and make sure that we get it done. Hello. Uh, well, first of all, I don't think this matter should be resolved over the phone, so I would probably book a meeting with studies. Uh, hopefully, I've been a, a, about an hour or so later, so I had the chance to speak with the board as well, and speak with the people responsible for, it, for the party, which in this case would be the Clubbies, I guess. Then, of course, I, would, I think that a conversation with the school needs to be held, and we need to think about what they want to see from SASA, and not just think how we would act on it ourselves. So, maybe they want someone to hold held responsible, or all they care about is that the aren't at the tables are being replaced, and uh, so on. So I think having a meeting with them and discussing it, and then of course taking the, the necessary precautions. Thank you. You all have had various roles within SASEP. Which has been the most important in your personal development, Philip? Uh, I would say that my role as a as far as I has been the most important. Uh, I think mainly because it's the biggest role that I have with the most responsibility and with the most people that I'm responsible for. Uh, in the project group there are seven, but uh, when Hunter Slog and I will actually take place, there's uh, 70 people plus working each evening for the event team. So I think just structuring all of that and getting a sense that you're really part of something bigger uh, to help me out. Yeah, I'm actually not to consider being uh, that you're wrong in this case, but uh, something that many people don't know I did, and maybe I'm doing it, but I used to be a project leader for something called Meet This Home, um, which is, uh, which is a, a project where we get people to help newly arrived people with homework. And I think that they don't be the most because it's, I actually got to feel, I uh, got, got to test a project that wasn't that popular per se. And um, it was a project where where less people applied than we needed to. So I got to learn how to motivate people to actually do something with SASE that's maybe not the well, most popular or most fun project per se. Uh, I was a vice president for the sports committee um, because it really inspired me actually that SASE, we do this 100% voluntarily. So the only limit is your imagination. And I think that is my biggest personal development that no one is going to tell you what to do. It's your own ideas and thoughts that will uh, set the tone for your year. And that is what I want to bring to us as a president. To uh, make people do that, we can do what we want to do. Yeah. Okay. You as president have a responsibility to make sure all functions are maintained and time will be scarce. How are you going to manage your responsibilities while simultaneously pushing the changes you are promising as part of your campaign? Clara. Should I start? Yeah. All of you hear us. Yeah. Uh, yes, so uh, this is important. I think that all the candidates that have been talking these weeks have said so many good things and they are promising a lot of things that I want to help them uh, execute. And, and therefore, my promises are more broad because I think that is what I should have to set the tone for this association. And so, my way of doing it to achieve my things at the same time as making sure that the organization is working well is to say, how is this increasing engagement 
is this strengthening our mental health in some way? And uh, what resources do we need to make it work fast? So, yeah. Uh, yeah, as uh, Clara said, uh, likewise for my lecture problems, they're pretty broad. Uh, and I think most of them are structural problems, which us have been working with for quite some time. Uh, some of them, especially since COVID, but many of them even before that. So, but I think one of the most important things for achieving both the daily operations, but also achieving um, the new goals and the goals of the, of the committee presidents as well, is to have a, from day one, or even from the day we're elected to Thursday, uh, already then start to work with a plan for how the year will look, when will we work with what, what events uh, are coming in to alter the, the different uh, strategic goals we're working with as well. Uh, so to, to structure very well, uh, and to, uh, of course, take a lot of help from our predecessors in, in how they've worked with the strategic goals and the, uh, the goals uh, we've had for a long time. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say I've had, I have a mix, and I really know that I have a bit more uh, complete uh, process, um, but that's because I want um, a clear goal to work with uh, early. Also, I think, uh, very much like I think both of you said, um, starting early is important because you all know once the budget is set, it's uh, quite rigid, uh, changing things. Um, and I would also like to really do a good effort to hold the other candidates um, responsible for their election process. I think, like I said, there's so many good ideas, but it's easy to just let them fall through. So what I can promise you is that I'm going to do what I can to, you know, actually enforce that these candidates, my dear other candidates, um, fulfill their election process. Okay. What is a small change that you believe you can make that would heavily improve SASA, a so-called leverage point? Should I start? Philip, please. Uh, I think some of you might have heard this one before, uh, and I've got teased for it a little bit, but one of my main things which I think will improve us a lot is just posting the weekly calendar as a post instead of just a story, so that you can always go in and find what's happening this week, maybe even a week in advance, so you can actually plan your schedule after events you want to attend, and, and uh, inspirational lectures and, and such. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, I would, I would try, and um, I think if we, if we manage to make uh, the recruitment processes a bit less rigid, I think it would be easier for many people to engage. I mean, um, do you know that the whole, the whole reason that we have all these interviews, and um, you know, long interviews, even for the people within the committees for very small positions, that I was born when, uh, when, we, when these uh, exchange rates uh, came into play. And you know, as you all know, these uh, last the last year they, they made these less valuable. And so I'm not saying we're gonna you know re remove the interviews and all that in one one step, but I think now that it's less rigid with the exchange periods, we should also be able to make it a bit less rigid with the interview process. I mean, having a a nice benchform role in either, for example, shouldn't require 60 interviews and all the, the, this big process. It should be easy to just go to a committee say from something and say, okay, I can provide this, and do you want me to provide it? And they should be able to say yes, it should be easier to engage if you want to. Yeah, and uh, similar to what uh, Philip said, I think we should personalize the communication. Uh, I think there's an ocean of information out there, and all the committees are posting a lot of information. So some goes missing, and therefore I think we should have maybe the end of the week where we personally tell people this is coming up and this is what you should apply for or attend. Yeah. As you might know, the macroeconomic environment is not great right now. And this could affect SASA as we could get a bit less company revenues in the coming year. How will you work around this and prioritize if that happens? Starting with Eldor. Yeah, I think so. Firstly, um, we would have to change the budget from the beginning, I think. Um, it, having a more negative outlook from the beginning will, you know, risk minimize us going, I don't know, a million crowns uh, negative in profit or something like that. And I also think we should try to look at other revenue sources 
And I'm not going to you know, specifically get into that because that would have to enable me to collaborate with other uh, committee persons. And I, I can go and promise to do something without actually communicating with them first. Uh, but then I also think there are a lot of foster adoptions you can make. And this is not my idea, this is the obvious idea. I really like your idea of trying to find a cheaper process where all the, every committee buys their clothing from me and take every year. It costs a lot. And Dog had a great idea that, you know, what if we just buy our own thick uh, in or, yeah, you know, put it in, uh, in Sussex somewhere and, uh, and why don't we print our own clothes? You know, that, that would save a lot of money and over a couple of years. And so looking at saving money, I would say, and also looking at other revenue uh, sources. Thank you. I think we should start with this sponsorship that we have now to make sure that we are having a good dialogue with them and making sure that they know what they actually are sponsoring. I would say, for example, with the sports committee, we have a frequent dialogue with them and admitting them about the things that we do within the sports committee. And that makes them, them understand what they're actually doing and what great things uh, they contribute with. So I think we should start there to really secure the ones that we have um, and also look for other potential sponsorships and then we work a little bit harder to find those um, in terms of that. No offense. No. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> first of all I think as the others have said uh, or on, the, on touching on that is that I, I know there's a lot of work being done with this already, but even more improve on really trying to get from the companies and speak with the companies about what is it they want if they sponsor SASA. Uh, what is their goal of giving money to the organization other than just having a logo next to a door? So first of all, just trying to find out what is it the companies really want. Uh, and then, of course, going out and trying to make that make sure that the organization actually lives on that. And then customization is obviously very important. Uh, one thing that maybe could be done is to, as I think some of the other candidates have proposed, storage optimization. Uh, so to to work with, okay, is there some way we can more efficiently store um, decor from parties or or whatever else we buy into the organization on, on a yearly basis? Uh, and then of course looking at which trends uh, are the most expensive and where do we might need to cut this this year, especially if we have lower revenues. How will you work to sustain and improve relations with the school, especially considering SSE's recent acquisition of Student Palazzet and the questions regarding how that will be used? Clara, let's start. Yes, so this relationship is extremely important and something we should focus on. And I do think that we as students should have a solution-oriented approach. That we come with solutions, maybe more than problems, even if of course we can come with uh, problems as well. Um, and that we have something to uh, bring concretely to the table, even if we don't have a finished solution. And that is one thing. And when it comes to student palaset, I think, as I said on my last visit, that we should dare to have these difficult conversations um, and really advocate for what we think is the best for the students. Because we are this school and we are the members who can make a big impact. And we are the ones who are running this, this business and educate ourselves. And therefore, I think we should really advocate for what we want. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, yeah, there's a set of very, very good points. Uh, I think, uh, first of all, I would really like to utilize the fact that the current board are going uh, on, their, on their board trip. The goal is to work with, um, with school or facility optimization, uh, or they're going to visit other schools to see what they're doing in their planning of their schools and how the students there can utilize the facilities even better. Uh, and I think the fact that Stan Palazzo's is right now being rebuilt and uh, will be finished next November and then the, like, the real design of the palace will be set in stone. So I think the, the com upcoming board has a really good opportunity to utilize the, the knowledge which the current board will get on their, on their trip. And then of course in the, um, in the dialogue with the school, uh, as I said before, try to understand 
as with the companies, what is it they want from us? Uh, which ones, events do you think they feel is the most beneficial for, for us as a school? Uh, and how can we help them help the students in the best possible way? Yeah, so for the religion with the school, um, involve them. I think we should involve them more. And this sounds kind of crazy, but I think the problem is right now, the school, they don't understand what SAS does for you. You know, and if, if they don't understand us, they're not never going to help us, you know? I think um, one of the most impressive things I did is we managed to get Stamis to go to the Gask. And if we make, you know, the school more, they, they need to feel they're, they're part of the SAS uh, board as well. Uh, or just us in general, you know, not studies, but a few, uh, few lectures ago, um, they they went out to Yarnsul. You know, they they went to banks at Yarnsul. They went to banks at Rotunda. You know, they, they were more involved. Um, so I think you know next uh, next holiday at Bangkok or next next gas. You know, it doesn't have to be uh, cool slant. Maybe uh, maybe that's not the best part to begin with. But maybe next holiday. Let's not only invite Islamists, let's invite you know, more, more members of, of, of control within SSE because if they feel a part of us, and trust me, they, 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 I think they think it's fun if, if we only, you know, tie up their region and it, you know, they're going to think it's fun. And if they feel like they're a part of us, then they want to help us. And I think we begin with that, then with, uh, with this, you know, student palazzo thing, I think, I think we have to have a conversation. Um, I think it's important not to be demanding. Uh, I, I myself, I've been, you know, oh, the school is so bad, and you know, they should give us this, they should give us that. And I think that attitude um, is something that many of us have, and, and is wrong. We have to change that. So I would involve them more and uh, just get a better understanding. And then if, if we do that, I think we can eventually get more benefits from it. Like, here yeah, some. Maybe we can move the uh, SSE print center to the student. Someday. As president, you will be in charge of a group of people that you haven't chosen yourself. What will you do to create a good group dynamic in the SASA board? Yeah. Elder starts. Yeah, so um, we're going to be 11 people elected, and, and we're not going to have been elected as a group. We're going to have been elected individuals. So 100% there are going to be um, people or groups that don't click down or, you know, have issues with each other. And I think it's important to establish early on what does every board member expect and what do they want. Um, and also, you know, if we early on address the problems we think are going to become later, I think that could be, could be good. Um, I myself, I found that if I'm a president, I'm going to do a weekend activity um, with uh, the future SSE press and peer press. And uh, I think I'm going to invite them home to my home in Waxon and maybe make a dinner and do some fun stuff together. And to, because that is something that, you know, you can see from the beginning, like, there might be issues here in the future. And there have been in the past. And if you address them straight away, I think that could uh, minimize uh, a lot of damage later on in the year. Yes, I think that we are all on the same team here. We want what is best for the students. And I think the strength with SASE is that we have a lot of different types of interest. So I think it's important to embrace that, that we're all liking different things, and that is what's going to increase, increase engagement in the school. And I believe, coming from the sports world and being a part of a team my entire life, that trust is key. To be able to have difficult conversations with each other, to be able to demand things from each other, you need to have a foundation of trust. And uh, that takes time to build. So if I'm elected, I would start with that straight away. Second thing is transparency. I think a lot of conflicts can arise because of misunderstanding, and especially if we have different wills within a team. Therefore, having an open and honest conversation with each other, where the communication is direct, will uh, minimize the uh, risk of conflicts, or maybe the risk of misunderstandings. 
And so trust and transparency is two key things. And then the third thing that the elder also mentioned was the activities outside of school. I think to get to know each other, to build that trust, to be able to demand things from each other, you need to have a lot of fun. And that we need to. Yeah, <clears throat> so uh, as Nalo said very well, I think, uh, for me one of the most important things when building a, a good group dynamic is to very early on establish what we, both what we demand from each other, uh, who will be working with each other uh, for most parts of the year, uh, which constellations will be used maybe the most, and also which will be used the least, maybe because that's why, where we need to work, work even more. Uh, so writing down physically, this is what we need to uh, or what we expect from each other, uh, and what we believe needs to be done through the year. Uh, then one thing I also, as I mentioned before, think is very important is to very early on establish a plan for the year. Because if everybody knows what they expect from each other, and what we expect from the board itself, I think we'll be able to work together really well. And then as both of the others said, of course you need to spend a lot of time together, uh, and not just working with, with the serious problems, but also doing some other things. How will you make sure that everyone who wants to can get involved in SASA, Philip? Um, yeah, so I think the, the most important thing is that we have many low engagement roles. Uh, if you want to be involved, but you have a lot of things on your side, uh, the, the easiest way to get involved at the moment, for example, is to be a host for something. Last year we had SNNC, uh, this year you have Hawaii, for example, or every year you have Hawaii. Um, and I think those type of roles where you, there's not a, a long commitment, where it's more of you're uh, in, in it for these couple of days, uh, I think those are very important. Uh, we can increase the number of people helping out at different events. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to have that much to be per person. I think it's a lot of just being a part of it, something instead of doing a lot of work with it. So I think just increasing the number of people to help out at different events uh, will encourage people a lot to get engaged. Yeah, I think they basically said everything I, I was going to say, but, but that's actually one of my next promises. I want to add more rules. And it's very much, uh, like you said, low location rules. You know, it shouldn't be possible that some people in Sasse are almost burned out to the point that they have so much to do that they're almost burned out. But we have so many people that also want to join. I mean, then then I, I don't think that should, should be able to happen. Then we should just be able to add um, lower engagement roles, you know. Um, so, so what if you do something only for a week for this community? You know, at, at least you do something and at least you get some work done. Um, you know, I, I, thought, I, thought maybe, I thought about one thing we could have is that, this is just for a day, but I, I thought it would be nice if all the committees had that like, cleaning day together, uh, like in the beginning of the year, uh, when the smoking are there. So, then every committee goes and cleans the room together, and then small team can come down if they want to, now, you know, without any interviews, you know, just getting to know the committee. And that is, that is a way to get involved, and also a way to get to know the committees without having to, you know, sit through an interview uh, for the first time in your life. Um, so, more engagement, more, more global engagement goals, just like you didn't tell us. Yes, I think both of you have really good points. I would also like to add that what do we mean with um, engagement? I mean, looking at the calendar today, we have almost at least one thing every day. There are sport activities, there are art initiatives, there are lunch pictures, there are multiple opportunities to get involved. And I think that we need to make it even more clear for the students that this is available and nudge them to really participate. Because I've been here for one and a half years, and I started going to a Viking just a couple of weeks ago, and it's so much fun. And tomorrow we have a practice again, and there's a lot of different type of people. It is master students, it is international students, it is first year students, and uh, we're having a lot of fun. So I think that being engaged and being included can be done today. It can be done tomorrow. It's just that people need to know what we're offering. And uh, I want to tie back to that with the ocean of opportunities. We need to have a clear and personalized way to communicate. Great. As you might have noticed, a lot of people who are involved in SASA are bachelor students. But we also have master and PhD programs here at SSE. And just as an example, 
How many people in here are master's students? No one. I think it's important to see who are answering those. Is it only the bachelor students answering the master questions? Or is it master students who answer the questions for them? So listen to what they have to say and what they want. Uh, yeah, very well said. Uh, uh, I think uh, something to add is that first of all, we we do see all students at many of the events. For example, at practices every week. Uh, I'm a football coach, as some of you may know. And every week, we almost every week, we do have a couple of masters there uh, and at different practices. So I think sports, for example, is something that's available and which most students want as well. If if they do not want to do to ask much, maybe. Uh, but why I think is the most important to engage most students even more is, as Claude touched upon with the roles, is communication. Because uh, I think uh, we, or the current group has done a very good job of introducing uh, exchange marriage for them as well. So I know that the applications for, for example, class reps have been a lot higher this year than last year and the previous years. Uh, so I think that's, that's a really good step in the right direction, but to, to communicate this to them and to communicate what type of events we have, because there are so many different events other than parties and other than the sports which are already attending, so I think the communication is key. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we might you know, be approaching the problem a bit from the wrong angle, um, because I've also talked to a lot of uh, most students, and the thing is, they a master student just, it usually does not have the exact same interest as a bachelor student. Um, that doesn't mean we shouldn't do anything, but uh, you know, we shouldn't try to force them into bachelor events. You know, I talked to to one one master in finance actually, and he he really loves some of the things that masters are doing. For example, masters are doing this kind of uh, thing where you get a random uh, uh, you get you you sign up as a, a friend or a partner. And then you get another random partner you, they go to dinner with, and he, he has to without working bachelor. So no way that you know, never, no one's going to be doing that in bachelor. But uh, the masters enjoy that, and so I think we should we shouldn't you know take any, because I I've actually talked to masters about this with the exchange ones, and most people that I talk to say they hate. They say you know well we don't want to. Why why are you for, why are you forcing us to get into these? roles that we don't want and so uh, it's like it feels like the way that is, that is been approached now is to kind of okay how do we get them to the events we already have how do we get them into the committees but you know i think we should talk to them like said, communication and try to find what do they find as fun because i can promise you they have a lot of things they would like to do but they're not doing it right now so you know one concrete thing there is that uh, we could definitely try to expand master club and uh, and because they are already doing a bit different things, then also, you know, their events, that doesn't mean that we can't come to them or they can come to our events. Um, but just try to, you know, tailor the events, tailor more events that fits them as well. That's what I would say. Thank you. Okay. With an increasing amount of international students being enrolled at SEC, how will you work to further internationalize SASE and integrate international students into all committees? Um, this is, of course, uh, one of the, the most difficult questions, I believe. Um, but I would say, first of all, uh, as we just spoke about with the master students, uh, at the moment we have a problem with them not engaging as much and not, not applying for as many roles. So I think maybe we need to have a conversation with them about why that is. Is it because you think people want to speak Swedish, or is it because you don't really think that those roles are as fun as other roles. Uh, as I've said before, I think in, in Sweden, at many high schools, you have a bit more of a culture of, of student associations than you might have uh, in, in other countries. Uh, so I think maybe adapting that culture and, and showing them that student associations do more than just, just parties, we do, do so many things across SASA. Um, and then I think, as I said, the most important thing is to, to have a conversation with them and, and ask them if if it's something that's wrong or if they just don't really have the, the same um, will as some of our distributed students do. Yeah, I also think it's a lot of communication. Um, make them understand what do they want uh, with their student time here. You know, 
I wouldn't be surprised. I come from the National Assembly. You know, there's there is a vote to you know learn Swedish culture as well, and and you know get get to try Swedish traditions and learn Swedish songs. You know, but think about it yourself. If you want to an exchange, for example, then you would want to learn a bit of that culture as well. So I don't think it's only about us making everything 100% international. I think it's more about just making them feel welcome and making them feel welcome and, and engaging in the communities and also communicating what they want. Um, very much like monsters, maybe they don't want to do the same things. So I, I think just it would be nice to you know if I give a more concrete example, it would be nice to talk to all the new students before all the recruitations, recruitments, and you know. Ask if they have the interest, and if they don't, then ask why. I think we can learn a lot from it. Thank you. Great, Taylor, I agree with you. I have two things that I think have been beneficial. One thing, starting here with the introduction, is the staging is intense. And I mean, moving across the, country, across the world, settling into a new country can be overwhelming. I myself did that studying at UCLA for one year, and uh, it was a challenge the first months, actually. So I think since a lot of success is starting straight away when you attend the SEC, I think we should take some inspiration from what Orion did and we modeled a lot with the help to success. They held the lectures for everyone in the school to uh, get to know success better. And I think that we can continue doing this, but I do think that we should have this as part of the website or um, on the Instagram, so people always can refer back to, okay, what is it? And what I mean with this help to us, for those of you who don't know this, is to teach us students. I mean, even for me, starting here, I didn't know everything about this as I said, and teach people, okay, what is Sasset? What is the history of Sasset? And what do we have here that we can offer? So that is one thing that I think is super important. And the other thing, again, is the personalized way of communicating to make sure that the events and projects that we communicate is communicated through a diversified group of people. So it's not only the committee presidents or maybe co-ed, that it can be other type of students from all different and that was actually master's. So. With SSE providing many high-paced and demanding courses, how will you work to improve student health? Starting with Elbow. Yeah, um, I think this is very important. <coughs> I think uh, this year as well has probably done quite a good like, uh, free work for us. Because I know you've done a lot of surveys, so you probably have a lot of data and insights. And I don't have those insights. I can't exactly say, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be able to say exactly what makes people feel bad. And for me, it's, uh, I usually get stressed about job applications, for example. That's something that stresses me a lot uh, right now. Um, so I would work uh, with the, the community presidents and the uh, next community presidents. Um, and, uh, also the next uh, extra president and, and definitely the next uh, president to see how we can improve uh, different things. For example, it would be nice, now I'm only going from my, my perspective, so this might not be right, but you know, being stressed about work, um, I think it would be nice if, uh, you know, and uh, 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 something uh, to try to minimize the stress. And it doesn't even have to be that advanced, it could be as easy as, you know, I know a lot of people here are making Excel lists together with all the application deadlines. You know, that, just that would be easy to have one big, you know, master file for all students. Someone in an organizing it so everyone can, can keep track of the dates, helping each other out. Uh, maybe have some sort of channel um, where we we go through, you know, okay, why do you feel stressed about this? Um, this was my my experience with this interview, something like that. And, uh, and also, I think there are already a lot of things we can improve or like keep it open, such as the health days and lunch structures. Um, so I would keep, keep developing the, the things we already have. But I also think that you know, more committees could probably engage in, in ways that help. Not only, I think it's Esther that holds the health uh, days and operations. Um, 
I might be wrong. Uh, there's one committee, anyways. Uh, so yeah, that's what I have to say. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh, I love this question. I think it's really interesting. Uh, 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 being in a higher chilling environment, it will pose challenges and we need to handle stress. It's something dangerous with a little bit of stress. We need to handle pressure, that is a great thing. Because we want to succeed, we want to be excellent for our family. So I think that we need to really, really push the students to prioritize your well-being. And this will be done in many different ways. Maybe for some people it is to do yoga, other people might need the extensions to see their, their job applications, and, and other people might need to do some uh, mental fitness with a coach. So I think there's several different parts where we can uh, improve, but the big thing here is to really show the students that this is something that we should prioritize to be able to have a sustainable life, both during the season, but in the long run as well. And the concrete things that I will focus on is to continue with the pilot projects. I, uh, I was a part of the SMART uh, lecture that we had, and it was great. Um, but I think that the attendance should be way higher. The same thing with the health thing. I think we should aim to have the health day as big as on the because that's how important it is. It was great speakers, uh, great events, but uh, once again, I think that the attendance can be a lot of time, and we're doing this is to work every day with mental health to increase the awareness and increase the understanding of the importance of your well being. Thank you. Uh, yeah, <coughs> I think that was said, that was said very well. Uh, one thing which I think uh, should be added is that, as I just said, uh, a lot of or at least me as well as you, and I think a lot of people in their second year are very worried about applying for internships and applying for jobs. Whereas in the first year when you just start out on this, it might be more about just handling the pressure of the courses and getting to know new people. And in the third year, it might be your thesis. So I think that, and, and so on for the master's and PCS, and so But I, so I think one way we really need to look at it is that different people, of course, also in different years, often have very different problems. And we need to kind of look at it from that angle. Uh, and then I think, uh, with touching on the health days as well, um, maybe we could extend the work around it, create more of a, a project group just as we are in Holy Co. Um, get another hand on each get some more spawns. Uh, and I think that's something companies, uh, speaking about the loss of revenue, revenue as well, something which is becoming increasingly more important and companies would really like to to help out with and actually sponsor something like this uh, and to, to increase. And I think the school as well are very concerned uh, and are, at least are becoming more and more concerned. So I think cooperating both, both a, a bigger project group and the school and, and hopefully some companies as well would be very beneficial. Thank you. Can I add to that? Mm -hmm. I do think that we should view well-being as an opportunity to build strength. Instead of looking at it as a problem all the time, which of course we need a support system for the people who don't feel well. We need to have that support system. But I do think that we should be curious in how can we have this as a tool to perform. So, yes, thank you. Anyone else want to add something? I think you said it very well. <laughs> <laughs> we lost many traditions during the pandemic. What's your view on this? Is it good that we now have room for new initiatives? Or bad that we lost our roots. Clara, let me start. Yes, I uh, I love the traditions. I think that is a big part of success, and especially uh, something that we can look back to and reconnect with people uh, when we're out of here. So I think traditions is extremely important, and I also think that is a way in to this school to learn all these traditions and to the community. But I do think that it's important to be curious and create new traditions and see where we can put our little touch on this school. So I like the old, I like all the great things that has been done, but I do think we should be curious and create our own traditions for the future. Uh, yeah, I think all of us do agree that, that traditions are very important and that 
Um, we, we really want to work, or I really want to work with, with previous presidents and previous uh, board members to really bring back what, what they thought was the best from their years. Uh, maybe go back 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, uh, and see what, what we can take uh, from their experiences. Um, but I do also think that we have improved since the 90s, uh, or I believe so, and I think we should continue to improve, especially there are a lot of things that have kept on going, uh, and I think some of them may, or most of them may, because they have been very successful. Uh, and they've been something which the students really wanted to do or enjoyed. So I think we should keep working with that uh, and, and keep being innovative. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep it quite short. I like traditions, and I think this is a perfect opportunity to, you know, cherry pick uh, the traditions that we think will work today. Um, and I, I, mean, I, I think uh, we, should, we should look back more, you know, we, we we're just going to be sitting one year, and many presidents sit one year, so it's very, very easy to use fun night nice traditions. Um, so I, 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 if, I, if I can be present, I will be working quite a lot with, you know, looking back, coming back, trying to find uh, what traditions may be most. So yes, bring back traditions. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to open up for if we have any audience questions. Just raise your hand. Yes. Uh, so on the topic of tradition, could you each just briefly say what your favorite um, Sasa tradition is? Yes, starting with Philip. Uh, I'm going to be a bit biased. Uh, and I'm going to say that for me, it's Hanna Um I think because it's such a big event, uh, it engages over 170 students and over 2,000 visits. So I think because of the sheer size of it, uh, that's my favorite. Yeah, um, I quite like the tradition of uh, singing in the backwards. That's a bit why I had my best problems of songbooks. Um, I think we have lost a bit of uh, Singing, maybe, um, uh, I'm not very singing at all, but I think that's a nice tradition we should try to bring back. I mean, I think everyone should know how this job is strong. Yeah. Yes, I also do love the singing, and I think we should do more of that. So, but if I should take something different, I would say the song and party. I think that's all I want. All that. So, uh, on the topic of singing, uh, and bringing back songbooks. Most of the songs in the songbook are in Swedish. With the growing uh, chunk of international students at school, how would you evolve the songbook? Will you keep the Swedish songs or will you translate them into English or add more new English? So what are you thinking on that? Yeah, yeah, so this is uh, going back to a bit when we spoke about international students. Uh, Malta, I can ask you. Um, if you move to Germany and they have some amazing singing traditions, wouldn't you want to learn some German songs to bring back as a you know, cultural heritage you know, of your time there? Wouldn't you think it's amazing, you know, getting getting that experience to get to learn another culture and another, you know, a song and another language that you can bring back later when you come back to Sweden? Yeah, but I would find it difficult to memorize the fourteen. So, yeah, so, so that's like a bit of my take. Um, I'm not, uh, I think we can have some English songs, but I also think um, uh, the traditional Swedish, you know, Hans Dahl and other songs, I, I think they should be kept in Swedish. And I think um, it's wrong to just assume that an international will not appreciate singing a song in Swedish. Um, we don't know that. I don't believe that, per se. And um, so I, I, I would keep, you know, the, the important songs in Swedish. That doesn't mean we, we only have to have Swedish songs. We can, of course, have English songs as well. Um, but not, you know, make all of the English songs. What do you think, Clara? I have a good idea. Yeah. Imagine if we add a song for every event. So let's say for the July, we have a German song. Or Thanksgiving, we have a US song. I and mean, then we can still keep all of our Swedish songs because they're really, really good. And I really agree with you that if you come to Sweden, you want to learn the culture. So 100%. But then we can also add for the events that we have. And because then we have fun songs to sing them too. 
Uh, yeah, I guess coming into the, the last thing, I'm going to repeat what they said a lot. But I think, um, as Edward said, uh, of course we should, we should teach the international students some Swedish traditions. Uh, and I think one way of maybe including them a bit more is to early on in the year, or a couple of times a year, uh, have maybe, I won't say sing classes, but maybe just have, have banquets like spin on song, but very focused on, on the song, uh, or on the singing. Uh, so that we can actually teach both the Swedish students, because I think a lot, of, a lot of us don't know half of the songs which you have, like, on a regular basis either, uh, but also the international students. But then, as, as Scott said very well, I think we could we definitely add some, some international songs, maybe not just in English, but in, in all of the different uh, languages which, which we have at school. Yes? Okay, just on the topic of songbooks, do you think it would be appropriate, or what's your take on having, like, an English translation of the Swedish songs. Do you think that would ruin it, or do you think people would start singing the wrong language, or what's your guys' think? Okay, we're going to start with Clara. I think that could be a good thing. I haven't thought about it before, but let's say that we have the original song on the left side, and we have the translated song on the right, and you can sing and learn the Swedish version, but you also know what you're actually singing. So uh, maybe you can have both there too. Maybe that's going to become a long very thing. But I'm in fun to write it. Uh, yeah, you could definitely translate uh, some of the songs, I would say. But I think, like, tr very traditional songs, such as Hanna's Oak, for example, uh, we might provide some translation for example, on the road to episode. But I think in, in the Hanna's songbook, uh, our most traditional song should, should be in the, the original, la original language. Uh, but for all of the others, or most of the others, I think definitely. It's an idea to translate them. Um, but then we're also, of course, have the problem of, of different languages and so on. But, but yeah, of course. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah? Yeah, um, I think uh, as a SASA president generally, uh, a lot of times when you're making decisions, they're very clear, uh, and you have the support of the US, and you have the support of a lot of SASA members. Um, but a lot of times we need to make decisions that aren't very clear. Coes is divided. Uh, most SASA members are divided. Uh, you still need to make, uh, take a kind of have a very well formulated opinion and still make some form of a decision. Um, so I would say right now, as SASA members, what is something that you all individually believe to be true that most SASA members or a very large portion of SASA members would disagree with you on? Starting off with Philip. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a very good question, man. Um, you want to start? Yeah, I would love to think. The belief that there's not enough spots. I do think that we have a lot of spots to get involved. We just need to see what involvement means. And I do think that maybe we should add that the fact that it's too little, I'm not 100% so sure about that. It's about your own engagement as well. Um, we're going to steal a bit from you. Uh, but talking on that topic, um, I think that we, we often speak about engagement, and I think all of us want to, want to increase it increase engagement, but I think we miss out on the fact that a lot of people are engaged just not within roles. You can engage in SASA by just attending company lectures or by, by going to parties in the Tuna. So I think that the way we look at engagement might not be completely right. Yeah, I think many people are going to disagree with this, but uh, I'm, not, you know, I'm not completely sold on this idea of the exchange service. Um, you know, I mean, what, should, you, should you join SASA because you want to work for the association and you want to have, you know, great friends, great memories, you know, great internal things, or should you join, join SASA because, I mean, I think those should be enough, you know, you, you shouldn't need, uh, need to give uh, something for members to join. And, uh, I mean, I know people are going to disagree with that, but I'm, just, I, I'm not entirely sold on that idea of exchange rates. 
So uh, the SASA president and then the education committee president are probably two of the most active roles when it comes to collaboration and communication with the school. And oftentimes we do that together, but also individually. So um, in your last debate, you, talk, you talked a bit about how you all have a bit of different approaches in how you would communicate with the school. What would you do in the case where your education committee president has a radically different approach? How would you make sure that you're presenting a united front to the, to the school um, in making sure that SASA seems like there's yeah, a united front and a united opinion? Yeah, I think uh, what you say is important. Uh, I think you should have a united front. So someone, I, I mean, towards school, you should always try to show that you're you know, a strong bargaining power in that sense. Uh, so I think someone would have to, um, you would have to come to some sort of conclusion, but of course both people, I think, would have to drop some things uh, that they would want to say. And I think there, there's a perfect example where we could uh, use more people within the board, and um, you know, more opinions, and, uh, you know, why not? I mean, I wouldn't be entirely against the idea of calling a board meeting, explaining the situation. I mean, we're all in this together saying, you know, I think this, and Gustav or Maya thinks this, and what do you think? Um, and then maybe that's enough to convince one of the other if all of the rest of the board members agree with me or the mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so if I understand her, it's between the president and the Yes, and I think you have a really good point there. Um, of course, we should be unanimous when we go to a Cecilia and talk with the faculty. Um, and sometimes there are differences. And I do think that having a board meeting and seeing what other people think is really important. And uh, also, again, transparency is key here to know what are we actually talking about and what are the arguments for both sides. But I do also think that emphasize um, listening to each other. Maybe the who press has the most knowledge right now. And if time is scarce and we don't have that much time to discuss this, then I would have faith in my new president to make those decisions. But of course, if the time is there, discuss, come up with a unanimous decision together that we can present to you. May I also just ask to clarify the question. Was it the attitude on how to approach the school, or was it differences in animality in that problem? It could be both. Or, but primarily, like, you have a meeting, you think uh, differently, or overall throughout the year, you have different approaches as a person or as a leader. Yeah. Um, I think, as I have said as well, uh, a very good, I think, theory is to, to call that a meeting. Uh, it, it might not even have to involve all of the work. I think sometimes you just need someone else's opinion because you might get a bit rigid in your own in your own thoughts, especially if they're, they're very opposite the the, the wills. Um, but also, I think sometimes, especially if it's if it's two different solutions to a problem, for example, uh, it might it might actually be beneficial to say, okay, maybe we'll make these two a bit more similar and then present both of them, uh, and actually have a discussion with the school as well. Uh, of course, depending on, on what the problem is, uh, but I think that could be helpful to that as well. Any more questions? Uh, yes, uh, so there, there are projects in SASA, engaged members, that are not uh, represented clearly by uh, any part of uh, the SASA board, uh, such as Hamdus Bexet or SASA Sustainability or Hamdus Dagna. We're represented by the vice president not clearly part of uh, this uh, board uh, culture and have a, might have a hard time to feel uh, like a part of the rest of the sunset. Um, how would you uh, try to uh, create the sense that the entirety of sunset and all projects are uh, a part of the same group or a part of the same team? Please uh, be concrete. <laughs> yes, Tara? Good question, Martin. I do think uh, one easy thing to do is to make sure that everything is marketed in the same way. So even if you're 
space it, or if you're some other committee that you have the same opportunities to be monitored on the channels that we have. When it comes to um, creating the feeling of being an in group, I think my. Yeah, as you say, not represented specifically in the board. So, for example, if there's a decision being taken which influences into a day, will almost always or always be there at the meetings and hear the decision and hear the discussion. So, I think one way of involving the parties even more is after, maybe not after every meeting, but after every meeting where the project has been discussed in some way or has been involved in some way, uh, you take a meeting with, if it's the vice president, which you institute, the vice president and the committee president or maybe committee board and so on. Uh, and just informing them on this is what our discussions were. This is our like our view on it. Uh, do you have a different view? And having a, a conversation in that way. And uh, I think that would be my way of approaching it. Yeah. So to give a concrete thing, um, I would uh, give everyone a spot in the introduction. I myself, you know, is responsible for this. I know all projects that didn't fit during the voluntary. And you know, so, so that is from the beginning, letting them have a spoon. Because, like, the, 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 the round trip of the most important thing for all of to get to know the communities. So, that's one concrete thing. You know, give them, give them a page and a guide and then give them a place in the round trip. I actually don't even know why we did it this year. But now that you say it, it's, I think it's always something you should do. Maybe help to suss this one. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, um, so as a SASE press, um, there will, during times during the year, uh, be, you know, uh, maybe, uh, I don't know if my English here, but uh, there will be times where we might feel low, uh, where there might be conflicts, or might be a lot of workload, and uh, I'm wondering what would you say will be your motivation in such times to get up those early mornings and, you know, still represent the group, put on a smile and be positive? Because the role of uh, such a press is pretty, you know, high in workload at times. Uh, I think that's a very good question. Um, I think my motivation, uh, generally, why I think why we're applying and why I'm applying is I I think such is so much fun, and I think that there's so many fun events. Uh, during a, or during the year, uh, almost as close as almost every day we have some kind of activity or event happening. And so I think in, in the times where we might feel a bit stressed or a bit low, I would say that my motivation would be that every event and every um, everything that's happening should get the same impression of, of me as a president. I will always try to be there and, and, and smile and, and represent uh, SASA well and show that to me in the SASA board and I as a president care as much about every project. Uh, so I think that would be my motivation, is to really try to show everyone that, that we care about that as well. Yeah, I think it's a... Uh, well, this is me personally, that I need to understand what I'm getting myself into. I understand. I, I mean, president is probably you know, the most lonely position in the whole world. And if people may not understand that, but that's the truth. And I know that. I understand that. And I'm still doing it. So I think that shows that I have the motivation, but also probably like more importantly, I have the understanding of what I'm getting myself into. Thank you. And uh, I would say that I'm actually very inspired by you, Adam, uh, for being the president of the sports committee. And to really go back to what is the purpose of our job? Why are we actually doing this? And I mean, in the best of worlds, you are happy every day. 10 out of 10 days, or 7 out of 10. But we are humans, and every day that is not possible. But I think uh, being passionate, showing your enthusiasm for this, and your engagement is contagious. So that one day that you're having a love day, maybe the 10 other people in the course is being uh, super happy and can uh, pull the team <laughs> And on a broader perspective, I think it's extremely important for us as a whole. Uh, we want as many people as possible to be engaged in success. And if we can have the co starting with the president as the leader of the board, who are passionate, enthusiastic, 
and are having a high engagement level, I think that will be uh, contagious to the whole association. So, yes. Yes. Uh, thank you for the answer so far. Uh, my question is regarding food, the Sasa Council, because that's something, that's a group of people that you're going to be working with quite a lot throughout your year. You have attended your first film uh, last week, so you understand how a little bit how it works. So my question is, how will you approach, uh, as a SASA board, working with film to ensure that both groups work efficiently for the benefit of the association? Hello? Um, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, if we're only looking for the best of the association, um, I think it's important to have like a professional relationship with them. Um, not, you know, if film and uh, the board are best friends, then it's hard for them to um, deny a company trip or board trip. Um, and I, I, I think it's, I appreciate, you know, people that are a bit rougher, if, you know, told us that some other people are good because you know they're going to say what they actually think. Not because they're friends with you. So I think you know communication. You should of course talk to them a lot. Um, I don't know about you, dude, but I, I, if I if I was a person, I wouldn't have you know very unprofessional relationship with them. You know, um, cozy dinners or partying all together. Um, I think that's wrong. That's not good for the association. They they should be separated. So you know, of course communication, but professionalism. Yeah, I think I have a different take on that. Maybe that the closer the relationship is, the better. Um, looking inwards, to my own experience, both in Sportsman and here in this city, I think when I want honest feedback, when I want feedback that is what I value the most, I turn to the people that I really trust. Example with this campaign, I've been talking with Ami, one of my best friends, because I know that she will always tell the truth. Even if it hurts, I know that she does it with good intentions. And I think the same thing is uh, with them. We are all on the same team. We want the best for the association. And uh, I mean, of course, we should have a professionalized attitude towards each other. But to be able to demand things and to be able to set the standards and have these difficult conversations. I think we have, need to have a, a friendly relationship in the foundation. Yeah, <clears throat> I think I'm gonna maybe approach the question a bit differently. First of all, I think that in order to have a really efficient um, cooperation with room and with with, with the Social Council, I think. We, as I said with the board as well, I think we need to, from the beginning, set some some boundaries on this is what we want for our, throughout the year. Uh, present what what the SASA board wants and, and hear what what food believes on, on on that aspect. When it comes to the relation itself, I I, I think I'm a bit between you guys, uh, but leaning a bit more towards Clara, uh, I do believe that we should have a friendly uh, relation. Um, but as Sandra said, I think professionalism should be a key point as well. Um, but, but also, a bit, as, a, as I said, a bit more towards the, the friendly the friendly side. Thank you. All right. Um, I have a question, uh, something I struggled with a uh, lot in the beginning, and uh, especially when you were pretty up and down low. How will you hold yourself accountable, both when you have a lot to do, but when your goals, your election promises, are piling up when other people in, the, in your board are feeling like shit, when you have to help them with their stuff, when you yourself feel like you're not really finishing what you're supposed to start, how will you hold yourself accountable? And if not, what will you do instead? Hadley. Really question, Ryan. Um, I think we can view this as a criticism. It is horrible running in the winter, but it will pay off in the summer when you have your season. And everyone can't get into my football <laughs> talk. But I do think um, that that is human. That is what's going to happen. That you have to understand that. And you, I think the key thing is to have that understanding that it will be tough and you have to work hard. And uh, I'm going to tie back to my lecture promise of well-being. 
to be able to prioritize your health is key to be able to give it to others. So I think holding myself accountable in the way that make sure that I'm working on my, my things to be able to give it to the others. Um, and of course, we need to see what the other people do. And I think it's easier to do that when you yourself understand that, okay, I'm being stressed. I have 10,000 things to do right now, but this is what I need to prioritize. If you can have a focused mind there, and be able to prioritize, I think things will sort out. Um, I think what you ended up there with prioritizing is, is one of my main main ways to look at this. Um, in, in general, when you have a lot to do, uh, I think some can confirm my, my favorite thing to do is to make it to do this and basically put what I think is the most important at the top and wherever there comes new things to do and to, to make sure that other people do, put it somewhere on the list. Uh, then just try to check me from the top uh, and down and just working with that structure. And then, as I said before, I think one of the main ways I would hold myself accountable is just with the mindset that all events and all members of SASE should have the same experience and get the same amount of um, support from us as board and me as president. Uh, and to really use that mindset to, to think that I really need to pull myself up and I really need to prioritize and I really need to show the others that I'm, I'm supporting them as well. Um, and give them the same attitude that I would have given if I didn't have anything to do at all. Um, so yeah. yeah, I would, uh, I think I would probably prioritize the, the other issues. Um, because if you're best time, you should be working for the best association. Now, if your election process happens to be um, more important than what's going on for the association, then sure. Um, but, uh, you know, if I'm in a situation where there's a lot of issues um, conflicting with me getting my election process through, then it's, uh, then it's better to deal with the uh, you know, urgent things, deal with maybe the other board members' promises. And once you've done that, you know, hopefully they can help you get through yours. But, you know, maybe you, maybe you can't manage. And then you will have to hold yourself accountable, and not, you know, to students, but also very much to your predecessor. Um, maybe even before the elections begin, try to explain why your election process failed, so that people don't aren't over ambitious. Maybe so. Yeah, I would I would prioritize uh, the other issues. Nick. Yes. So uh, to build on to Ryan's question uh, about uh, your accountability, uh, I kind of thought of this. Uh, someone said earlier something about like enforcing the other board members uh, election promises i think it was elder maybe and i know now that we're almost here too i know uh, that many uh, predecessors probably agree with me that lots of uh, election promises are shit uh, so like a two-part question uh, do you think we should enforce all election promises uh, and how in that case and then the other part is uh, how would you work with the uh, accountability of the board yeah, can I agree? Because I said, okay, maybe it's not so bad. The enforced word per se has a negative thing to it, but that's not what I meant per se. If it's a bad election promise, of course you shouldn't go through with it. But what I don't want to see in my board is, you know, okay, we made it. You know, it's, now we're done. I mean, now we, we, we got elected, so now we're just going to have 100% fun. You know, we're going to have a lot of fun, and any candidates out there, but. Uh, but I think uh, I think that enforcing work is that um, I want everyone to really you know work. The, the, when we're elected, if we're elected on Thursday, then it should be you know okay, it should be celebrations, but it should also be the work begins now, not we made it. Um, and I, I don't know so what did you what was your other question about the accountability of the board? Or yeah, how, how would you uh, uh, assure there's uh, accountability in the board? Like uh, how do you make sure everyone? Um, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think it's. I think that goes back to to talking about, you know, having a conversation before the year begins. But then also, you know, I'm not going to be afraid to talk to a board member if I feel that person is not doing their job. I mean, that that should be all of our job. We should be, we should be the first to pull us. 
and to tell someone off. Um, and so, so I'm going to enforce accountability. And also, we can get help from film, for example, talk to them. Um, uh, so I, I would say, maybe that's the wrong answer, but I myself will hold the other board members accountable uh, to get the film. Um, first thing was the action process from the candidates. I think here, this is a work that we need to start with in the beginning of the year. Um, it also ties to my action process, <laughs> actually, with uh, prioritizing and evaluating uh, our projects. I think we should do the exact same thing with everyone's promises. If we lay everything up to the table and we all together discuss, is this possible? What is possible? What is valuable? And together see, set that operational plan of what our year will look like. I think we can always fall back to that, but this is what we made together as a group. And the second thing, uh, by holding each other accountable, that is a major thing. Especially in an association like this, that is very big, and there's a lot of stakeholders. I think, a uh, little bit what Brian said, we need to start by yourself, holding myself accountable. But the second thing is trust, once again. If we can create trust within the board and create a foundation of friendship, I think that you will hold yourself accountable because I would not want my friend to look bad. I would not want my put my friend in a shit position. Um, and therefore I think if, if you lead by example, by holding yourself accountable first, then the board members will continue. But I also think that that is something that you should set in the original plan and that we all agree. Uh, to answer your first question, pretty blunt thing now. I do not think all election processes should be followed through. What I do think we should do in the beginning of the year is to go through maybe also the candidates who lost election processes because um, a lot of you often you choose three, but there are obviously more than three things we need to improve as well. Uh, so I think that already from Thursday, and especially before our actual mandate period begins, we should sit down and, as I said before, what do we expect from the year, what do we expect to accomplish, and what do we expect from each other. Uh, and if we've done that, both what, what the goals are for the year, and what our goals are, or what our expectations are from one another, I think it's a lot easier to hold each other accountable. Because uh, if, if I know what you expect from me, and you know what I expect from you, uh, it's going to be easier to have the conversation as all the things spoke about, and, and actually say, right now we're not really going towards the goal as much as we would like to. Uh, so I think that's, it's, it's all about the, how you start the year and what, what expectations you have on one another. Yes? Um, you all always said that you want to make sure that everyone from one feels welcome and included, but how do you actually want to ensure that? Starting with Janet. <coughs> Very good question. Um, I would say that first of all, first of all, we need to look at uh, who doesn't feel included at the moment, because obviously there's a lot of members who do feel included, and maybe that's not where, really where we need to start. Uh, so, so having a conversation, um, maybe posting anonymous um, forms to just fill in and not say I don't think you do it, but rather uh, this is an improvement I would like from Salsa, uh, in I would like this type of event, or I would like the person to be more welcoming or whatever it is. Um, I'm not saying you're not welcoming. Right? <laughs> um, but so, and then of course I think uh, just, I believe that offering a large variety of, of events and activities and, uh, and help with uh, whatever members need is the best way to, to make people feel like they're part of the association. Because if there's a wide enough range of things you can do, there will always be something which you enjoy, I believe. And then you'll feel good, good enough for Any more questions? I think the other two. Oh. 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 Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll keep it short. Um, uh, I think that was a great idea. Um, have we ever had any sort of poll or questioning about what could be improved with the city? I don't think so. Uh, so that's a great, that's, that's a great, uh, great idea. And I also, that's one of my extra points, you know, 
if there are 100 goals and 400 people applying, like, there's going to be problems. Like, you can't. That just creates problems. That's why I want to add as many roles as possible. And make it you know, easier to get in. Well. Not only you know, these long, rigorous interviews. You know, it should be easier to talk to committees, say what you want to do, explain how you're going to improve the committee, and that should be, that should be a easy kind of decision to say, yes, do this. Yeah. Yeah, I think we, uh, one example I can give you is with the sports committee and the open door policy. I think it's self evident that this year we have taken that to the next level. If you go down during lunch, it's at least 15 people micro waving their lunch or just chit chatting. And uh, that is a talk that we set within our committee, uh, with the board. So I think we should do the exact same thing with SAS board. That if we have an open door policy, if we lead by example, I think that would be contagious. And the other thing, like Edward uh, said, but, or uh, even if he didn't say it, but um, what we need with the inclusivity. I mean, we can ensure that we have a lot of things that you can be engaged in. Um, we just need to communicate that and see this is all the things we can do. And uh, of course, we can have more roles and stuff as well. But there are several ways that you can be included in the association. And, and open your Right. Uh, yeah, I just want to build on that question a bit. So, something that actually was brought to my attention this year is a parent, Russians, <laughs> who raised the concern of the crayfish forest. Um, and this ties into a bigger question. So only a handful of us here know what the crayfish party is. Uh, it's essentially a smaller, select few, uh, smoking are invited, and old committee members are invited for a crayfish party that's hosted every year. Now there is this sense of uh, uh, community with the exclusivity, in a sense, of the association. What is your approach to that balance? How do you maintain something that is super, super high engagement, where everyone can do whatever they want, but also attracts people to do the dirty work and also still fosters this sense of close, close community? It's very hard to ensure that everyone can go for everything, and then you still have a super tight feeling of people being involved in EU, for example, or the interaction committee. What is your approach on that very, very kind of hard balance? And Mike? Yeah, so that's, uh, that's you know, my point of adding new roles, because, okay, I agree with you, you know, if we pump in, you know, 10 more roles to EU, that's not gonna, that's gonna, you know, that's not gonna be the same thing, the same community, same traditions, and so why don't we create an awesome new project with 10 roles instead? Then we have a lot of different projects, and they all develop their own traditions, their own sense of community, and so that's why I really want, you know, there are there are things you can do, you know, their imagination is their only barrier. Anyone should go up and say, okay, I want to start this project, um, is it economically feasible, um, is it possible? If it is, then yes, go for it, you know, Recruit ten of your friends and uh, have an amazing board. It, like it's, it should, it's not that easy today. You know, it's very hard. If if I want to, you know, this is an example. Um, I last year and um, when I was a small team, I thought it would be amazing to have like uh, um, the like someone broadcasting all the World Cup matches in the pub, you know, every day. And they did it. We did the final. But I went to the very early and said, you know, I could do this. You know. I don't need to be a part of you, but I can do this with some friends and we could, you know, create something. And that was not useful per se, but, you know, not just possible because, you know, you have to make a motion, you have to get some food, you have to do all these things. So more, you know, new roles instead of adding, yeah, more new, easy roles to get into, basically. <laughs> Sorry for the long answer. Um. I want us to have the approach that the biggest challenge we all have accomplished is entering that big oak door. And when we're in here, all doors should be open for you if you're curious, if you dare to engage, if you want to see where can I be. Um, and your question is difficult. Um, it's a fine line, I think. Because, of course, we want everyone to think good, and we are doing a great job with this by everyone can attend the parties in the Tunda if you pay the tickets. Everyone can attend the sports if you, apply for, if you um, sign up for it. 
You can go to the lunch lectures, you can go to the art initiative, there's a lot of things. And I do think that people have different engagement uh, levels. And some people want to be 110% doing it all the day often, <laughs> maybe not study that much, and other people want to focus on their studies or something outside. So I think, I mean, we can add more roles, and I think, of course, we need to look into this, maybe that is the reason, but I do think that we should also look at, okay, if we want to create world facets, if we want people who are passionate, then we should. Um, we should award them for being that passionate. And I do think that we should think, okay, what is the engagement that I think there might be a risk of people just feeling uh, satisfied when being inside instead of driving the force of doing a little extra every day. Uh, but I do really, I want to stress that I do really think that, as you said, the initiatives, we should 100% encourage that. And if you want to play the World Cup in the pub, then you should do that. 200% and we should support that. Then I think, I mean, in the best of worlds, uh, of course, we want to accept everything and just go for it, but there must be some sort of relation with money and uh, the emotions and everything. Um, so I do think uh, it's a really difficult question that I'm going to be excited to look into if I'm really it. <coughs> well said, uh, uh, and then uh, I think, Ryan, speaking of, or all of you, but uh, to answer your question, uh, speaking of both inclusivity and exclusivity, I don't think that they can coexist. Um, I think that exclusivity is uh, sometimes needed to get people to feel that they're, they're actually really working towards a project and maybe to engage them even more and to really build that strong, as we spoke about before, for example, the, the Sunset Board, that strong bond between each other. Um, but that doesn't mean that that committee or that group has to be exclusive or not include others in their in their social gatherings, in their uh, crayfish parties, uh, or, or so on. Uh, so I think that we're doing it pretty well at the moment, not perfectly of course, uh, but I think that by adding, maybe it's not that you have to come to someone and say, I want to do this. Because I think a lot of people will be a bit restricted that they maybe don't have an idea, or they don't have not the courage, but the, the uh, drive maybe. Maybe they just want to to run around and be guided by, by the party group at on the side, for example. Um, so I think that for me, the most important thing would be to have really low engagement roles or just should, it should be all, as I said, all groups should have an open door policy. You should always be able to come to the committees. But that doesn't mean that the committee should be the largest that they've ever been, or that we should suddenly have 100 people in the EU board, because that will be bring a lot of problems as well. Um, so I think the combination there. Right? Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry for holding you back so long. It's my successor, so I have the right to uh, ask uh, many questions. Um, what is going to be your biggest struggle this year? Uh, and that's both in your role and as you as a person. I think it is um, that it is a small spoon of opportunities. So I think the biggest challenge would be how do we prioritize? I think that would be the biggest challenge because you want to do everything. And for my personal um, challenge, maybe trust your gut because you're in an exposed position and sometimes you have to trust your gut. And uh, in the beginning, that uh, yeah. Um, yeah, great question again. Um, I think for, for the role itself, uh, one of the most difficult questions to solve um, is how do we actually both engage members and communicate the possibility of engagement, as we've said so many times this evening. Uh, so I think those are two of my election process, and I think just accomplishing that it's super easy to be engaged. Uh, everyone can be engaged 
in however much of the way that they want and simultaneously connect or communicate this to everyone. Because uh, I think we're not there yet. There's quite some distance to go. And it's something something we'll work on very hard during our year. I hope all of us will get selected. But but also I think it, it can't be done in one year. It's gonna it's gonna take some time because it's the summer because they start into this hopefully newer and, and, and better communication strategy. Uh, but there's gonna be some resistance or, and some, some difficulties with those who already attended school and, and so on. And uh, for myself, I think a lot too. First of all, the morning meetings, as you might have seen on Instagram, I'm not I'm not very, um, uh, I don't really love to wake up in the morning early. Um, but I think secondly, um, as you said before, just uh, making sure that as many good election processes as possible uh, are being fulfilled. Because I think there's a lot of things you have to do to just maintain the organization. And uh, this has been a problem for many predecessors. Just, just keeping the organization running and, and handling problems, protecting problems, takes so much time that it's really difficult to implement new things, uh, especially in the beginning because there's quite a, quite a long learning process. So I think just really trying to make sure that all events are, are all like promises that we want to fulfill and be fulfilled. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to be interesting. Hey, yeah, this is uh, probably more of a personal thing, but I think it probably applies to you as well, Um, today, a lot of the communication seems to 
to be where the where the mouth of what is the best things and what is not popular. Um, so I think we should focus on that. Like, okay, how do we create that engagement? Is it to change? Is it through word of mouth? Then how is that being done? Um, or should we perhaps have a more personalized, as I think, personalized communication channel um, where people share their experience of different projects, both if they have been to the projects or if they have arranged them themselves. Um, because then people will know that, okay, this is a tradition that we have had for a long, long time. This is something you do want to go to. Um, and I do, yeah. So a personalized way of communicating will increase engagement, I think. And maybe then we don't have to choose. Or delight. Great. Do we have any more questions? No. Then I will give all of you 20 seconds each to convince the people here and the people who will watch the entire video to the end why they should vote for you. 20 seconds, starting with Elbor. Um, so yeah, 20 seconds. I think I have shown the evidence uh, today and a large debate that I can handle the pressure as president. And I also think I have shown my campaign that I really, really, really want to become president. So, both of them. Yes. I think that I, with my passion and energy, will spark this association. If you care for well-being, if you care for engagement and having the best experience, then vote for Clara. <coughs> well, you should vote for me if you feel that you want a president who will really, really represent you towards external parties. If you want a president who is willing to go that extra mile to make sure that all members of the association really feel included and that all members feel engaged at the level they want to. Thank you. Thank you. So that was it for this year's presidential evening debate. Thank you all for joining us. The voting will open tomorrow at 1. And remember that you can protest vote and blank vote. But you can also choose to vote for any of these candidates. Thank you for coming, guys. All cool.